G'day avocado enthusiasts, 122 days ago, I started germinating some seeds in plastic bags with paper towels and then 50 days ago, I placed those seeds in this fish tank in Avocido Boats. Last time we got an Avocado Diaries update, we saw that they were growing roots and some were starting to grow shoots. Now, let's take a look and see what's going on in the Avocado Lagoon. If this is your first time joining us on this channel, my goal is to grow an avocado tree from seed to the point of bearing fruit whilst documenting the process. And the way that I'm doing that is in this series called Avocado Diaries. So yes, we've started growing some seeds and now we have got some small trees. Let's take a closer look. It looks like the water started to cause some problems with the flags, which I could have probably predicted that printed paper is not going to withstand water too well. But the avocados named Chill and United States of Avocados have both got two shoots and they are growing fantastically. In a future video, we're going to talk exactly about why they've got two shoots and how we manage that. That's not for today. Then we've got two avocado trees, Avocado of Light and Treasure Island. They have got a problem. Well, it's not really a problem, but their avocado boats have sunken. <laughs> the stems have become so big, so long, that they have unbalanced the avocado boat. Now I actually haven't had it this early happen before. I did have it in my other fish tank. After many months, they would become so big that they would fall over, but I haven't had it this early, which is really interesting. I've corrected it a few times, but each time it doesn't take long for them to sink again. So I'm leaving them under water for now. It's not actually a problem so long as there are leaves above the water for these trees. It's not a huge problem. That's going to be a problem long term if they always live underwater like this, but not at the moment. Then the seed that we've named R, which wasn't doing very much, has finally cracked and is putting out a root. And the avocado, perhaps now ironically named finally, is still not doing very much at all, but we will keep an eye on it. But what's going on when an avocado tree or any tree grows or gets taller? When plants grow, they make new cells to form more plant. The cells are produced in specialised areas called the meristematic zones. In the meristematic zones, there are undifferentiated cells, and these are just cells that can become any part of the plant. As the tree grows, the meristem also moves up. It adds new growth to the very top of the trunk, or of the branch. This meristem is called the apical meristem because it's at the apex, or at the tip of a tree. Some plants grow from the bottom first, pushing things up. Grass is an example of this. As the tree grows, the meristem essentially deposits new cells at the top of the tree, as though it's building a tower, placing one block at a time on top. And as it does this, the meristem will also progress upwards. There's also the lateral or secondary meristem, which provides lateral growth, or it causes the tree to become wider. It's located in the cambium layer, which runs throughout the entire tree. It will deposit new layers of xylem and phloem each year and is what is responsible for giving trees their rings. For more on what the xylem and phloem are specifically, check out the previous episode of Avocado Diaries. So plants grow using the meristems, which are parts of the plant that make new cells. In trees, the apical meristems make the trunks taller and branches longer, whereas the secondary meristem makes them wider. There we go. I think that's pretty cool. Now, I have some sad news. The fish that we called Quark has unfortunately passed on. I'm not going to show any footage of it here because that would be unfair to you. You came to this video expecting avocado growing updates and not to see dead animals. Now, I was a little bit puzzled. He was looking a little bit unwell for a couple of weeks. He was still eating, but he wasn't gaining any weight. He became quite thin and eventually he passed on. He wasn't getting bullied, so Rom was not showing any aggression towards him. I was checking the water parameters and all of the levels were where they should have been. So I am a little confused. And this happens sometimes with fish keeping. Now, because this was a fish which was born in one of my tanks, I'm actually thinking it might be a problem with 
my animal husbandry because I haven't introduced a lot of new genetic variety into my guppies in a little while. I think that they might have been some birth defects, so that's my fault and I'm going to be rectifying that very, very shortly by adding some fresh males so that we can avoid this kind of inbreeding which leads to these problems. I was also worried about perhaps an illness, so I've been keeping Rom by himself and guppies are schooling fish, so I would like to add some more fish into the avocado lagoon very soon, but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a problem that would be passed on to other fish that I added. But Rom has not shown any signs that there's any problems. It's been a few weeks now and I'm pretty confident that there was just a problem with Quark and Rom's doing okay, he's fine. So I think I might add some more fish to the Avocado Lagoon to help him because he's a schooling fish naturally. It's better to have a few in there at least so that they can school. They don't really school in tanks unless they're feeling threatened or really, really stressed, but it's good to have a few in there. So that's a bit sad, but other than that, Rom's doing fine. The Avocado Lagoon is looking a little green. It's warming up here, so the water's often sitting slightly higher than the heat is set. So it's still safe, but with the light and with the heat, it just means the algae grows faster. So I, I'm actually about to change the water here and I'll continue to change the water weekly to make sure that I'm staying on top of that to maintain the health of the aquarium, of the lagoon. But what's next for our trees? Well, very soon, these trees are going to need pruning. I've spoken at length on this channel about pruning and I will do that in this upcoming video as well. And we'll go into some of the science behind why we do it, but that's for our next episode of Avocado Diaries. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, I'd love to know with that like button and in the comments below. I love receiving all of those. And if you haven't subscribed to Scott Grows an Avocado Tree already, please consider doing so. So you don't miss any future avocado updates. We've got some exciting things planned for 2022 and I think you're going to want to stick around. If you'd like to get your own avo cedo so that you can grow your own avocado trees, perhaps not in a fish tank or maybe in a fish tank or in a bowl or something, there is an affiliate link in the description as well, which supports me. Thank you once again for watching and we'll see you next time.